inviting me to speak uh, here tonight to address you on the issue of the Shannon. Unfortunately, Mr. McDool was unable to make it, but I'd like to point out to the previous speaker that, unlike Mr. McDool, I'm slightly smaller but better looking than he is. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, one of the features of this debate to date has been a, a lot of inaccuracy, possible sleight of hand, and very deliberate sleight of hand. So the way I'm going to proceed tonight is I'm going to bring it down and bring a bit of a reality check, and I'm going to point out some of these features, and I look forward to subsequent speakers uh, getting involved. Now, Mr. Dr. O'Malley started off by saying that he was sick of traipsing all over the country and standing up having to uh, propose and support this proposal because he felt the onus was on those calling for an over. Now, I, like Dr. O'Malley, have been traipsing all over the country doing exactly the same thing. But I, unlike Dr. O'Malley, am quite happy with my position in this debate. Because we have a constitution in Ireland that was adopted by the people in a vote. And where somebody wants to change that constitution, I say very much the onus is on them to tell us what is was great on rhetoric, but he was quite quiet on detail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of his points and I'm going to flesh it out and talk a bit about the detail. Dr. O'Malley tried to brush over the reason why we're here and we're having this debate. He said, listen, end of Kenny doesn't really enter into it. Now, in fairness to Dr. O'Malley, as far as his organisation is concerned, one house, end of Kenny doesn't really enter into it. But as far as the referendum is concerned, end of Kenny is very much at the heart of it. Because if we look at the origins of this proposal, we have this weird Kafkaesque situation where Enda Kenny addresses a summer school and he says, I think a reform shannon would be very good. He prepares a policy document setting out how a reform shannon would provide and perform a valuable role in our democracy. What happens a couple of months later? Eamon Gilmore is high in the polls, Enda Kenny is scared, and he could put before the people a stunt. So much a stunt that when he announced it at the Gale dinner, it was a surprise to the majority of the Fine Gale people in the audience. And I say that stunt aspect to this debate has carried through a lot of the rhetoric here today. You see all over Dublin posters from Fine Gale. Save 20 million, fewer politicians, abolish the sham. Well, I say that in Ireland, we're lucky. We're lucky that previous governments recognised the need for an independent, impartial referendum commission, charged with putting facts before the people in a clear and concise and independent fashion. Because if it wasn't for the referendum commission checking out some of his figures about the 20 million, we would still be stuck with this thing where government ministers were saying the opposition of the Shannon would save us 20 million. What did the referendum commission find out? No, that nobody can say with any degree of accuracy how much money the Shannon would save. What do we also know with degree of accuracy? That when Shane Ross, formerly an independent senator now in the posed a parliamentary question to the uh, clerk of the Houses of the Oireachtas about when you break down this 20 million figure uh, and you're talking about direct and indirect savings, a lot of funny words being used here, but what does it mean in terms of an actual savings? But well, the carpet had all said the indirect savings of 10 out of million for any. So the savings argument is rubbish and it's gone. Now, in relation to the power graph, again, it sounds to me to rubbish a power graph on the basis of, oh, it's cheap rhetoric. But power graph, ladies and gentlemen, is what it is. Article 27 of this constitution, the people's constitution, which has been referred to by a previous speaker, provides a valuable safeguard for minorities in this country. Article 27 provides that if a majority in Dáil Éireann pass a bill, the majority in Shannon Éireann oppose it. If a majority of the senators and one third of the TDs petition the president, he can do one or two things. He Sorry, can call a general time, election. Times Wait, I'm just not yeah. He can either call a general election or he can put the matter to the people in a referendum. Now, unlike other articles, unlike other articles in our constitution, when you read this long bill, unlike other articles in our constitution, they're not just taking out the reference to the shadow in the article, like for example in the article dealing with the judiciary. In relation to Article 27, they're taking out the article as a whole. Now, a speaker from the floor asked me how many times has that article been used. Well, what I would say in response to her is I have a fire alarm on the side of my house. Thankfully, my house hasn't gone on fire yet, but I'm not bloody well taking down the fire alarm. wasn't just sitting down and thought it would be a good idea to pink this up. Article 27 was written at a time, conceived at a time, when 
parliamentary majority across Europe, both on the right and the left, were installing totalitarian dictatorships. Now, just like our constitution was written in 1937 for the Ireland of 2013, 2014 and 2015, I say the decisions we take now aren't just for us, but they're for our children and our children's children. Dr. O'Malley. Uh, if your fire alarm has... Sorry, if your bed on the roof. If your fire alarm has never worked, doesn't work, and has no possibility of working, perhaps removing it might be a good idea. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 